Hello, the internet. I'm Dr. Peter Allen. My PhD is in bioanalytical chemistry, and today I want to talk about chromatography. My goal here is to do two things. One, to explain chromatography to someone who's never heard of it and doesn't understand it at all, and two, to demo an educational kit that I bought from Amazon. So this is the kit I bought. It's about $15. It is a pretty simple high school level paper chromatography experiment includes the beaker paper and pens, and with a couple of additions like some extra solvents and some highlighter pens, you can make some pretty neat time-lapse video like this. Chromatography originates with paper chromatography, which is what we're going to demonstrate. I don't know how well this kit will actually do that, but we're going to find out. The origin of the term is a chromatograph, so a color chromato and graph drawing, so a color drawing, but this predates color photography by a long shot. What we're going to do here is you're going to take an ink and separate it into its different colors. And these nice people provide instructions, ink which we can separate, and chromatography paper. Now not all chromatography is done with paper. More advanced Chromatography has accomplished some things like in a gas chromatograph or a liquid chromatograph. These use flowing liquids through a column or flowing gas through a column, which is basically just a tube, to separate things flowing within that stream. In the case of paper chromatography like this, a strip of paper acts like the column and liquid wicking up through the paper is going to act as a, what is called the liquid phase, or the mobile phase in this case, the liquid phase. So they've given us paper, a cup, and some various implements. The way these are going to go together are going to be described by the little instructions. Let's see how good those are. Draw a line. They include a pencil, which is great. about an inch up. With one of the colored markers, like this one, draw a line above the pencil line. This is a thick line. And then pour a small amount of water into the beaker. I, mean, I want to make sure that's not as tall as the line. So I've poured water up to about this level. Then take one of our wooden dowels, these guys, attach our paper strip to the wooden dowel. Position the paper in the middle of the beaker. So we're going to let that hang, and then we wait. So this kind of works. You can see the orange dye traveling up the paper strip, but I only put the one color on there. This demonstration works much better if you overlay two inks. So let's try that again, but this time we're going to put one line of orange ink down, and then apply a second dye, in this case kind of a purple ink, over the top of it, so that we're going to end up with a very dark black line from which we're going to see, hopefully, a separation of those two colors. So once again, it kind of works. You can see in the time lapse that maybe the purple goes a little ahead of the orange, but those two run nearly the same speed. I've set up a couple more runs basically the same way. This time I've got a green Sharpie and a green highlighter. And you can see that the green Sharpie stays right where I put it and the highlighter moves much faster. But we can actually do one step better. If we're using a highlighter, we can use fluorescence. This is a blue LED. I'm going to put a yellow filter on my camera so that you can't really see the blue light. So with the yellow filter on, I'm going to draw some Sharpie, which has no fluorescence, no glow. It's not a highlighter type pen. But a similarly colored orange highlighter responds to the now invisible blue light by glowing. We can visualize our separation with that blue light, put on the yellow filter, turn on the blue light, and you can see that the highlighter has moved much faster than the Sharpie. 
we can actually do a whole separation time lapse under this blue light with that yellow filter on. And you can see that green highlighter races ahead. But what's really interesting is the green highlighter actually has a lower band and an upper band, meaning there's two different chemicals in that highlighter that are different despite having similar colors. So we could actually do a little thought experiment to sort of plot that out. So in order to explain what we've seen, let's imagine a little game. There are two teams, a red team and a blue team, and each team is divided into players. The teams represent two different chemicals, and the players represent different molecules. So team red really likes to be solvated. It likes to be in solution. It likes to be in the liquid. Each player on team red rolls a die, and on a two, three, four, five, or six, that player gets to move. That represents the idea that they are going to be in the solution, in the water, moving most of the time. They only get stuck if they roll really low, if they roll a one. Team blue plays by different rules. They roll a die, and if they get a one, a two, a three, or a four, they stay stuck. They prefer to be settled down on the surface of the paper. As a consequence, Team Red moves much faster than Team Blue, but they also get spread out by the randomness of their individual molecular role. The point here is that because these different molecules behave according to different rules, they move at different rates. Because they move at different rates, they can be separated from each other. Chromatography is to analytical chemistry what telescopes are to astronomy. If you want to learn about what's in a sample, you're probably going to have to do some chromatography because samples are going to have lots of different things in them. As an example, alcoholic beverages have a mixture of ethanol water and other little fun ingredients. How do you determine how much of each is actually in the sample? You're going to have to separate it. This is a paper that describes exactly how that's done using gas chromatography. It's as if their magical machine took a shot of vodka in one end and spit out a shot of alcohol and a shot of water at the end. Although the shots in this case are about 0 0.00001 ounces. But just that fact that you can take a very complicated mixture and turn it into extremely precise separate components is a very, very powerful thing for chemists of all kinds. I hope you found this interesting. I think that chromatography labs are really good, but I think it's tough to demonstrate the sort of nuts and bolts of this, looking at a paper chromatogram, the final result, I think it's much easier if you take a time lapse. So hopefully that was useful. I will see you all next time.